did I characterize your stance correctly? Are, are, are you pretty bullish here? Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of uh, perma bills at paying capital. Uh, perma bulls, I yes. Under- I love it. Yeah. Uh, I can think you, there's a lot you, of underlying yeah, fundamentals to you know support that with what we're seeing with the market and the economy right now. Lay them on me. Sure. Uh, I mean, a couple things to note about the S&P. So we're, we're obviously having a lot of volatility this year, but corrections are really a normal, healthy part of the market. I mean, if we look back over the last decade, we've had nine drops of 10%. And aside from what we saw with COVID pandemic and the recession scare in 2018, they've all really proven to be excellent buying opportunities. And look at what's happening with S&P 500 earnings and valuations and what these companies are doing right now. Um, you know, it's estimated that earnings are going to increase by eight and a half percent, just over eight and a half percent over last year. So far, for the first two months of the year, S&P 500 companies have set a record for buybacks at over 200 billion. And Goldman actually yeah. estimates that number is going to be up to a trillion dollars. I, I saw that, too. I saw that, too. Yeah, it's going to be a, a record quarter, probably a record year on the buyback front, um, which could be a bullish indicator. Uh, I guess, but it could also mean that they don't know what to do with their money. I don't know. Um, so, okay. The, the, yes. Uh, corrections are normal. Bear markets are normal. You mentioned the fact that you're, you're, you're a permable long-term. Uh, I, I've said this before. I'm permable as well. Long-term. Uh, what I'm not as convinced about though, is like the rest of this year, explain to me why you think markets could go higher this year. Well, I mean, markets are ultimately a slave to earnings, right? So we're seeing that earnings projections are are going higher. And what makes up such a huge part of that is the American consumer. I mean, if you look at you know GDP, American consumers account for about two thirds of that. Um, and you know, look what's happening with with the jobs numbers. We had almost seven hundred thousand jobs that we added last month. Um, the employment count in the U.S. is about two million jobs off of where we were pre-pandemic. And if we continue at that pace, um, you know, we're going to be there in a few months. Um, companies are rising wages, you know, U.S. household net worth eclipsed $150 trillion in the fourth, fourth quarter, um, a record. So I think you have a lot of consumers out there with healthy balance sheets. And psychologically, I mean, a lot of people that I speak to are just fed up. You know, you, you, you've gotten your vaccines, you've gotten your boosters. Omicron's been pretty mild. They really feel like they can get back out there. A lot of these states are rolling back any kind of mass mandates or restrictions. Um, so a lot of the people that I talk to are really just going up, going about their lives as normal, spending on goods and services, they're traveling, going on vacations. Um, so I think a lot of that spending is really going to be translated to, to higher earnings um, in these companies. And I think that's a lot of you know what we're seeing with the, the guidance and the numbers that we've seen so far. How, how do you factor inflation into all that, though? Because those earnings are worth less when inflation is running at 8%, 9%. That's true. Um, but I think, you know, if you look at what the 10 year Treasury is doing, um, you know, that's signaling certainly that it, it's going up and we're, we're still going to have inflation. But I think long term, the view is that some of these supply chain disruptions and things that we saw from the pandemic are going to start to cool towards the end of this year and into next year. Um, and look at uh, dividend payouts. I mean, domestic dividends paid out the highest ever in 2021. I think it was over 500 billion, about 511. That number is forecast to be higher this year. Um, so what what helps with inflation as an investor, obviously, is is generating income as well as growth. So that's really a huge part of um, you know keeping pace with inflation. But I do see that starting to cool a little bit, certainly from levels that it's at now. I, I don't really know what to make of the economy right now, because for every bullish thing you said, unemployment has come back down. Uh, the job market looks, I mean, more or less pretty healthy you know there's inflation uh across the board um consumer confidence is low the aaii survey seemed pretty bearish as well um so i don't know what to make of all that i i, I mean convince me that that everything is okay i guess well i mean i think if you look at it as an investor um consumer confidence is really a contrarian a bullish indicator right <laughs> like what happens when we're approaching these bear markets? We have this euphoria where everyone thinks, you know, this can't go wrong. Fear of missing out. We got to just leverage and, and get in. Um, and I think the opposite is true as well. You know, people are obviously really fearful about what's happening with inflation. Um, you know, the numbers that they're seeing at the gas pump or a variety of other things. Um, but again, I think, you know, if you look at uh, oil futures as well, I mean, oil futures are pointing to 
um, you know, 80 something dollars a barrel versus, you know, in the hundreds. So if oil futures are pointing to lower numbers in the future, I think we're seeing some other indicators that inflation will will start to cool in the future. Um, so, but right now, you know, I think sentiment is just down, which doesn't necessarily have uh, connect with where we're going in the future. And that's really what these markets are looking at, right? They're always forward looking. So how, how are you advising or positioning your clients right now, right? The, the ones who are concerned, the ones who do want to be strategic and take action here? I mean, I think you have to look at historically what markets do, you know, after downturns. Um, obviously, we need to stay invested because as we spoke about inflation, right? So if we're sitting in cash, we're losing purchasing power. That's not getting it yeah. done. Um, bonds aren't getting it done. So we know that we need to be invested long term. Um, if we look historically, you know, we've seen um, a couple, I think, four big financial drops since the crisis, not including COVID. Now, they've averaged about 147 days. Uh, the median drop has been just over 17 percent. However, from the bottom, if you look at the next five days, it's popped six and a half percent. And over the next six months, it's recovered 24 percent. So can the market go down from here? Absolutely. But I think you really want to have that long term view in and say, OK, do I think that the market is going to be higher in one, three, five, ten years? Um, and I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. So what do we do now? It's really about being in a balanced, diversified portfolio. You know, what we saw from 2020 to 2021, the things that were working really, really well in one year, you know, tend to underperform the next year. And then the the, vice, the, the opposite is true if we see what's happening with energy and commodities. So really, okay, so, I just, yeah, sorry, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So in, term, in terms of those equities, though, I mean, it's a pretty broad bucket. So can you be a little more specific as, to, as, as far as how, because everyone that was overweight tech just had the best decade ever and uh, they're not having a fun time now. So yeah. can you drill down a little bit on the equities exposure and, and how sure. you're advising clients there? Yeah, I mean, I think you need to have balance, right? So you need growth, you need value, um, you need large caps, mid, small in the US. And then we want to look at foreign markets as well. Uh, look at what happened in the dot-com bubble. I mean, the NASDAQ was, was soaring for years and then it took after from the peak um, to the trial, it took 14 years for the NASDAQ to break even. So do we want to own tech? Absolutely. Right. If we if we do go into recession, let's say the Fed hikes too fast and it sends us into recession, maybe ultimately that's bullish for tech. Um, but really, I think, you know, the big picture when we want to look at as investors is we're not making bets. Right. We know that we can't predict the future. So we want to own everything in a balanced, diversified portfolio so that we can really take advantage of whatever sectors or areas of the market are going to outperform. But, but what about the, the people that really are, I mean, maybe they're in retirement or near retirement and really are concerned about the short term? How, how, what, what do you advise for them right now? Just, you know, stay invested in the balanced portfolio. I mean, a big part of what we do, aside from the investment piece, is financial planning, right? So we're running projections for all of our clients to show that they can retire sustainably because of their expenses, what they have in their assets. And making a plan for, you know, let's say that we need to take out money out of the portfolio. Well, that's why we need a balanced, diversified portfolio, because this year we can take from energy, we can take from commodities and we're taking profits. Right. We're not taking losses. So it's really just about being well balanced and diversified. I know it's you know, boring and vague as that sounds um, and having a plan. Right. Running these projections and making sure that you're on track. It is simple. It is boring. I think that's by design. A lot of people can take boring. Right. I, I love boring. Right. I, 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 th I think boring is amazing. Uh, but 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 it, but boring is uh, it's boring. Right. I mean, it's uh, it, it it's more fun to it's, it's more fun to to chase the hot fund manager, the hot stock of the week than. Uh, um, yeah. Then 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 just stay diversified, stay invested. I do agree with you for the record. I fully we're on the same page there, but um, it, some, sometimes it's hard to to psychologically to separate that long-term mindset with like so many things just to worry about today, this week, this month, this quarter, this year. Right. Um, how, how do you do that? Because there's a whole, I can, I could list to you off a menu of things, of reasons to be scared right now. There's right. A war. There's a war. There's inflation, um, rising rates. We didn't talk about that. So, um, how do you separate that? That's always going to be there, right? You, you know, the old adage, markets climb that wall of worry. There's always going to be headwinds. There's always going to be risks. It's really just about how can we manage it in the best way possible. 
And I mean, look historically, you know, what the market has done and and the performance that it's generated. And really, it's just, you know, the global population growing, productivity increasing, um, and just, I guess, you know, being an optimist. Um, you could bury your head in the sand and worry about all the, the negative things out there. But what good is that going to do? Where is that going to get you? That's true. That's true.